Then we have the next question from the sister. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you, Can you increase my volume, please? Without the weapon, I am weak. My name is Shafina, and I'm a student in uh, this college. Um, from Western perspective, Muslim women have so many restrictions, such as wearing hijab, social control, and limitation as freedom of expression. Actually, it's the other way around. So, as my question is, Sorry, how sister, can the, that women have restriction about hijab? Yes. And what is the other part of the question? I could not hear it clearly. Um, uh, we, we have restrictions, and but actually, from Western perspective. Uh, we, they thought that the hijab were, is just like so many restrictions, but actually it's the other way around for us. So my question is, how can we as Muslim explain this message without any misunderstanding between Islam and other religions? Well, sister asked a very good question, that though the Western world considers hijab as a restriction, as a subjugation, but it's an advantage, how can we explain? And mashallah, I was... I was there with the uh, Prime Minister of this country and he told me this school, they have selected minimum those people who, who have IQ of 150 and above. So I can see that is the reason I'm getting questions like, why do the women have more advantages? <laughs> and here the, here the sister rightly said that wearing hijab is actually correct. It is the Western world which says restriction. So how can we reply to them? Point number one, if you see in, in most of the religions, the scripture says that you should wear hijab. If you read the Bible, the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5, says the men should not wear clothes with that, that pertinent to women, and women should not wear clothes that which pertinent to a man. If you're in the first Timothy chapter number two, verse number nine, it says that women should be dressed up with sobriety and shamefacedness. They should not wear costly array and braided hair of gold. And in first Corinthians, it's mentioned in chapter number seven, verse number five, it says that the woman that does not cover a hair, the woman that prayeth and does not cover a hair, Head, she dishonors the head. Her head should be shaved off. Shaved off. The Bible actually is more strict than the Quran. And even if you read in Rig it says that the woman should cover the head. So even in the Hindu scriptures it says that the woman should be covered the head. As far as coming to hijab, normally, normally, many a times or most of the time, when a Muslim religious person is talking about hijab, he talks about the hijab for the woman. But in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first speaks about the hijab for the man and then for the woman. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whenever a man looks at a woman, any female, and if any brazen thought, any unashamed thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. One day there was a Muslim who was staring at a girl for a long time. So I told him, what are you doing, brother? It's not allowed in Islam. He told me, our beloved prophet said, the first glance is forgiven. The second is prohibited. I have not completed half my glance. <laughs> what did the prophet mean by saying the first glance is forgiven, the second is prohibited? That doesn't mean you can look at a girl for about 10 minutes without blinking and saying I have not completed my glance. What did the Prophet mean that if you look at a girl accidentally, do not intentionally look at her again to feast on her beauty? The next verse speaks for the hijab for the woman. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, it says that, say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not her beauty except what appears ordinary of, and to draw her veil, a head covering over the bosom except in front of her husband, her father, her son, and a list of mehram, the close relatives which she can't marry is given. Basically, there are six criteria for hijab. Number one is the extent, which differs between the man and the woman. The remaining five are the same. For the man, the extent is from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and the hands of the wrist. There are some scholars who say that even the face should be covered. 
The remaining five criteria are the same for the man and the woman. Number two, the clothes they wear, it should not be tight fitting so that it reveals the figure. Number three, it should not be transparent or translucent so that you can see through. Number four, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Number five, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And number six, it should not, it should not resemble that of the unbeliever. Now, if you see in the past, in the history, in the time of Babylonia, women were never given, were never given respect. At the time of Babylonia, if a man committed murder, if he killed a woman, instead of him being punished, his wife was put to death. If you read about the Roman civilization, they considered women, they were used only for sex and pleasure. If you read the Greek civilization, they believed in a mythological woman by the name of Pandora, which was, and that's the reason they degraded the woman, and they believed she was the cause for all the evil in the society. And in Greek civilization, women were used for sex and pleasure. If you read the Egyptian civilization, they consider that woman was a sign of devil. In the Arab civilization, before the Quran was revealed, they, it was very often that when a girl was born, she was buried alive. After the Quran was revealed, this evil practice stopped. Now, Quran and Islam is the first religion that uplifted the woman. And it has shown a way how to maintain the status. And that's the reason hijab has been done. To uplift the woman and to maintain the status. Allah says in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse 59, that, O Prophet, tell your wives and the believing woman, when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, the overcoat, so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. I would like to ask you a question. Let's suppose there are two twin sisters who are very beautiful, who are equally beautiful, and if they are walking down the streets of Kale, and one of the twin sisters, she is wearing the Islamic hijab, the complete body covered, except the face and the hands up to the wrist, and the other twin sister, she is wearing the Western clothes maybe a mini skirt or a top with a very deep neck. And if both these twin sisters are walking down the streets of Kale, and if round the corner there is a hooligan who's waiting for a catch, who's waiting to tease a girl, I'm asking you the question, which girl will he tease? Will he tease the girl who's wearing the Islamic hijab or will he tease the girl wearing the Western clothes? Western clothes, it's a simple question and a simple answer. You invite and you get trouble. So that's the reason Quran has clearly mentioned that hijab has been prescribed for the women so that they shall be recognized, they shall be respected, and it will prevent them from being molested. So the reason hijab has been made compulsory for the women is to uplift them. Otherwise, they will go back as in the olden days, women were used for sex and pleasure. Today, the Western civilization Claiming to uplift the Western civilization talks about women liberalization. This Western talk of women liberalization is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of a body, of degradation of a soul, and deprivation of honor. The Western society claiming to uplift the woman have actually degraded her to a status of concubine, mistresses, and society butterflies, which are used, which are used nothing for sex and pleasure, in the hands of pleasure seekers, in the name of art and culture. The Western society talking about women liberalization and art and culture are only degrading the woman. And we see that. They say equality, equality, and you see it's common that whenever you see an ad, whether a woman has to be or not, invariably you'll find a woman. Even in the ad of a motorcycle. How many women ride motorcycles? Percentage-wise, very small. But in the ad of a motorcycle, you see, you see, you'll find a woman. And I was told by someone that in a very famous ad of BMW, you know BMW, it's supposed to be a very status car. It's in competition with Mercedes. And the youngsters, they like BMW because it's a better pickup, fast. In one of the ads I was told of BMW, in that BMW advertisement, in front of the BMW car, there was a lady standing with a bikini and the ad read, test drive her now. Who, the girl or the car? 
what is the western world doing they are selling our mothers they are selling they are selling their wives they are selling their daughters if this selling your mothers and wives and daughters means subjugation then we muslims are happy to be subjugated we are subjugated with the law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to be protected we love our mothers we love our wives and we love our daughters that is the reason this hijab it protects the woman and we want our women to be protected and uplifted hope that answers the question allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making an oath in the established house al bayt al ma'mur al bayt al ma'mur to the creation of the heavens is equivalent to al kaaba to us just as we make tawaf around al kaaba and it is the first house on earth established for the worship of allah the same thing is to be said about al bayt al ma'mur as muslims would visit al kaaba angels will visit al bayt al ma'mur